Again, welcome back to CS102, Introduction to Programming Using Java. This lecture is covered chapter three of our course textbook that's using Java built-in classes and objects. Our main objective is to solve two problems using Java built-in classes and again, objects. So our first problem is to write a program that prompts for and read the user's first and last name. Then it prints a string composed of the first letter of the user's first name, followed by the first five characters of the user's last name, then followed by a random number in a range between 10 to 99. Assuming that the last name is at least five letters long. Also, similar algorithms are sometimes used to generate user's name for a new computer account. So again, our main goal here is to write a program that will ask the user to enter his first and last name separately. Then we are going to generate again a computer user name account. And that will compose of the first letter of the first name, followed by the first five characters of the user's last name. Then we are also going to generate a random number in a range between 10 to 99. So again, our main program name is a username generator.java. So this means our program again, main class also name will be username generator. So we have our main class, username generator. And now since we are going to ask the user to enter an input, we are using the scanner class. And since we are going to generate a random number, we are also using the random class. And both scanner class and random class is inside the Java utility package. So inside our main program, again, this is our main function. We have public static void main we declare a three variables. The first variable, which is a string data type, we are going to store the user's first name. Then the second variable, which is last, we are going to store the user's last name. Then the username variable, this is where we are going to generate the username, which will be the first name, uh, first character, then the first five characters of the last name. So here we use the scanner class. We create a scanner object, which we call the scan. And system.in means we are going to use the keyboard to get the input. Then next, we, can, we also create the random objects, which we are going to use to gener generate the random number. So now we have our scanner object to generate our input, ask the user to, get the, to give us the input from the keyboard because we are using system.in. Then we also have the run object that will generate the random numbers between 10 to 99, according to the question. So the first thing we do here is we have system.r.print. We ask the user to enter his first name. Then we enter, we enter the first name into a variable name first. Again, here we are using next line method because the first is a string data type. So we use next line. So the scan dot next line. Then next, we get the last name. The same thing also enter your last name. We also use the scan dot next line. Now we are going to generate our first character. So generating the first character, we use the function name char at and zero. Zero means the first character. And we are going to store the first character. I mean, we are going to generate the first character from a variable first which was our first name. And we are going to store it in a username variable. But before that, the question said, we should also generate the first five characters of the last name. So here we use the substring method. Again, substring method is a built-in method from string class. Normally in the string class, we don't need to import any package because it comes with a uh, java.lang package. Java.lang package, we don't need to import it. So here we need five characters. So we say from zero to five, which will give us zero to four position, five characters. 
Then, and these five characters will be the first five characters in the variable last name. Then next, we need to generate a random value between 10 to 99. We have the run object already, so we use the run int 90 plus 10. This will make it possible so that the value will start from 10. Because we know when we say 90, then it will be from 0 to 89. So we are adding 10 to it, so that it could be from 10 to 99. So again, run dot nest int. If it's 50, it will generate any number between 0 to 49. If it's 90 here, it will generate any number between 0 to 89. But we say plus 10 so that we can generate any number between 10 to 99 according to the question. So we have finished with our program, uh, our main requirement here. So the next thing, we print our result. Our result is the username. The username is the first character of the first name, which is right here. We say first dot char at zero. Char at, we can use it to extract one character at a time from a string. And our string is, is stored in a variable name first, which we ask the user to enter. So our input is the first name, the last name, and also we randomly generate a one value between 10 to 99. So let's look at the second program. The second program says we should write a program that will print the sum of cubes. It will prompt four and also read two integer values and then print the sum of each value raised to the power three or to the third power. So we can see that the first program, we use the built-in Java class, which in this case is the random class and also the scanner. In the random class, we were able to create our run object, and also we use the next int built-in method. Also, we use the string class method, such as substring, and also char at. So that's the main goal of this uh, lectures or this lab work, is how to use the built-in Java classes. Every class comes with its own method. So here, Again, we have our main class name sum of cubes. So the name of the file will be sum of cubes dot Java. Again, we have already learned the first day in class. We already learned how to run Java code. So I'm not I'm not going to write run this code in this lab work. So we normally use the J graphs at class and in the lab work. So here we are going to calculate the sum of two cube integers. We have our main method. So we need to generate, we need three values. So we came up with our variable norm one and norm two, and then the value. Because the question said, and we should prompt the user to enter two integer values, then bring the sum of each value raised to the third power. So we need norm one, norm two to get the two input values. Again, we create our scanner object. We are using the system.in, that means our input will come from the keyboard, new scanner system.in. Then we ask the user to enter the two integers. So we have scanner.nestInt. Now the data type is int. So we are using the nestInt method. Now if the data type is a string, then we use the nest line. So we use nestInt to get both num1 and num2. Now the question said we should raise the value to the third power. So in this case, we can use the math class with the power method. So POW will take, which is the power, it will take two values as argument. The first value will be the base and the second value will be the exponent. So num one comma space three means num one to the power three, which is what the question told us. Ask the user to enter two values, raise the two values to the third power, then add them together. So here we are adding, this is our plus. We raise our second value to the third power using the built-in, again, method called the power. Now the math class is called a static class. When you are using the math class, we don't need to create an object for it. 
So here we have the power. Again, power is POW. It's a special method that belongs to the math class. The math class have a lot of uh, especially trigonometry functions, like to find the sine, the tangent, square root, etc. So we have our solution now. Our answer is the first value raised to the power 3 plus the second value raised to the power 3. So the next thing is our output. We print our result, the sum of cubes. The output is in a variable name value, so we print it. Again, the plus here means we attach again the content. We want to print the content of a value. And the plus here is joining the strings and the value together. We said in our first lecture's lab work, we use the plus either for addition of two values. If any of the values on the left or right is a string, or both of them is, is a string, then the plus sign will act as a join operator, or we use the term concatenate operator. So that will be the conclusion of this lecture's uh, lab work. Here we learn again how to use the Java built-in classes. In this question here, we learn the math class with the power method. So again, wish everybody the best and see you in the next lectures.